All right, little video on Raoult's law, which is the vapor pressure of mixtures. Take a look. If you're asked a question where you're given the vapor pressure of acetone and the vapor pressure of chloroform, I mean, this could be any two molecules, two vapor pressures, and you're told you have a mixture of the two, you can figure out what the vapor pressure of the mixture is with Raoult's law. All you have to do is take the vapor pressure of each pure substance multiply it by the mole fraction of each substance and then you just add them all together. Here's actually let's solve this problem first and then I'll show you why it works. So at 25 degrees Celsius we're given two vapor pressures and uh, I gave you the formulas and molecular masses so that you don't have to look those up yourself right now. If we have 200 grams of each in a beaker what's the vapor pressure of the mixture together? Well, we're given the vapor pressure of each molecule on its own, or each uh, solution on its own, pure, and we only need the mole fraction to help us figure out what the combined one is. How do you find mole fraction? Well, we need the total number of moles in this container. We need the number of moles of acetone, and we need the number of moles of chloroform. The number of moles of each is just mass divided by molar mass and we're told we have 200 grams of each. You may not have to do this calculation if you were just given moles. I was given grams so we have to do it this way. 200 grams of acetone gives me 200 over 58.1 grams per mole. Whatever number that turns out to be is the number of moles of acetone. And we have 200 over 119 grams per mole of chloroform. Let's figure this out. We got our this thing. 200 divided by 58.1 is 3.44 moles of acetone. And we're going to add 200 over 119. Combined acetone and chloroform, we have 5.12 moles of stuff. So, the mole fraction of acetone is the number of moles of acetone out of the total number of moles that we have. Oh crap, I forget. How many moles of acetone do we have? 200 divided by 58.1. 3.44. 4. 3.44 divided by 5.12 gives me a mole fraction of 0.67. I'll carry one more decimal place, too. Now, the mole fraction of chloroform is going to be the same thing. It's going to be the number of moles of chloroform that we have. That's 200 divided by 119. That's 1.68. Out of the total number of moles that we have, that's 5.12. And I get 0.328. Pro tip, all your mole fractions together should add to 1 because these are the fraction of moles that each one accounts for and all, I mean, you can't, I mean, you're, it's supposed to add to 100%, so it all adds to 1. Great, so here we are. Uh, where's my blank paper? Yo, right here. And so all we have to do is apply the formula to the numbers that we have. Let's see what we can do here. I'm not going to be able to show it all at once, but that's okay. Let's use pink. The total vapor pressure of the mixture is the vapor pressure of pure acetone times the mole fraction of acetone plus the vapor pressure of the chloroform times the mole fraction of chloroform. So, the vapor pressure of pure acetone was 201 millimeters Hg doesn't matter what the units are as long as the pressure units match here, times the mole fraction of acetone, 0.672. And we add the vapor pressure of chloroform, which is 173, times the mole fraction of the chloroform, that's 0.328. Mole fraction has no units. I'm showing my units in full right here, right now for you. 201 times 0.672 plus 
173 times 0.328 gives me 191.8 uh, 192 if I'm going to use significant figures. So the vapor pressure of this mixture is 192 which honestly makes sense because it's in between the vapor pressures of the two things. Little little other tip, if you're given a solid here, let's say this was 200 grams of salt in water, you'd use the mole fraction of water, the, the mole fraction of water, the vapor pressure of water, the mole fraction of salt, and the vapor pressure of a solid you can consider to be zero. Makes it even easier. Great, so that's how you do the calculation. Why does it work? I'll just tell you. If you have a pure substance, only purple triangles, and they have a certain vapor pressure, that means they escape to the gas phase at a certain rate. And they condense back down into the solution at a certain rate as well. But if you mix green squares in there, green squares or, I don't know, chloroform, then the purple triangles have less opportunities to escape because half of the surface area of the surface of your solution is taken up by another kind of molecule. So if it's exactly half and half, moles and moles, then the total vapor pressure is going to be half caused by purple triangles because they're half of the solution surface area. And it's going to be half green squares because they're half the surface area. If purple triangles were more of the surface, they would have a higher mole fraction and they would account for a higher proportion of the total vapor pressure. It's because the mole fraction affects the fraction of molecules at the surface that can escape to the gas phase, which is the definition of vapor pressure. Anyways, I hope that helped. Here's your calculation. Here's your theoretical why does it happen. Best of luck to you, Raoult's Law, boss.